I also want to say thank you to all of you that are here. I had to, um, they asked, Julia asked how many people are still continuing with the class and have been, you know, coming on a regular basis um, of all the teachers, not just me. And um, I was so proud when I looked at the list and saw how many people have really stuck with it. So thank you, thank you. I, it really shows a commitment on your part. Um, she was impressed too. She said I was a good teacher. I said I have good students. Um, <laughs> no, we thank you for being here with us. Right, exactly. No, it really is very special. I'm, I'm very, very proud. It's lovely. I love a lovely thing for us, all of us. Okay, now it's 10.04. So what I'm going to do is we, I, hopefully we'll go over some other prayers, but um, we're going to go over again what you do when you have an aliyah to the Torah. Because also for us, for all of us, that is the time you're by your, you're doing it by yourself. All the other prayers that we were, have been learning, we're singing with everybody else. Um, yes, we could be leading, but I, I'm not going there. Um, but everybody's singing together. But when you have an aliyah to the Torah, you're doing it by yourself. So it, it requires another level of confidence. Uh, even though we've heard it, all of us have heard it many times, many, some more than others, but we've all heard somebody that goes to the Torah and does the Aliyah. Um, when you do it yourself, it's another whole story. Mm. So I'm going to tell you it's on page 40 in the textbook. It's on page 142 in the Slim Shalom, page 172 in the Lev Shalem. And page 400 and uh, uh, complete Sim Shalom. Just want to close my door. And if anybody didn't catch it with your C door, let me know. Okay. So I'm going to go into, I think, Lev Shalom, page 172. Okay. I, I have a conf conflict here. Um... Yes. Okay, no, I know I don't have one, sorry. Okay. And we, this, we're, the, oh, we're at, the reason that I wanted us to have our prayer books for doing the other prayers was because, what the, so when you're in synagogue or when you're praying by yourself with your sidur, um, you know, you know what it looks like. This is a little tricky because when we go up for an aliyah to, aliyah to the Torah, we don't usually bring our siddur. There's a big card on the lectern. Um, so it's, it looks the same, but it's a little tricky. First of all, if some cards have the Ashkenazic on one side and the Sephardic on the other. So you, when you're reading the Hebrew, it's not quite as, as important as if you're doing the transliteration because if you're reading the Hebrew, you know what the Hebrew looks like for either one. But also, um, we're gonna when we do this, we'll see what the, what the tricky part is. So, and uh, sometimes it's very interesting. People will not be conscious of the fact that they're covering over the card, and they think, "Oh, you know what it is." You know, they'll have the binder that's up there and it's covering. I always move it off. I really believe one thing that it said in our textbook. It talked about learning prayers by heart. I really think that it's not good to do prayers by heart because you don't, because part of being fluent is knowing what it looks like. And it, particularly if you know what it is and you're reading it, then it's even, it's good because the next time you see it in someplace else and the word someplace else, you'll recognize them. So I think it's real. And also when you do it by heart, sometimes you get lost, you panic, whatever. So I really believe that the bet, whatever it is, no matter how good you are at it, that you try to read the Hebrew. Um, okay, one, I'm gonna take one, a one minute break. Andrea Hager is joining us. We're very proud. Uh, we've got a new student halfway through. Um, hopefully everyone will make her feel comfortable. We're all, we're all friends Hello, here. Andrea. Thank you. <laughs> we're all friends. So um, welcome, welcome. Um, you, anyway, 
So we are currently on the the blessings for the Torah. When you go up for an Aliyah, uh, I don't know which book you have. Um, if you tell me, I can tell you what page it is. Sidur Sim Shalom. Okay, the big one or the one that's only Shabbos and the holidays? See, this is very um, tricky. Shabbat and holidays. Pesbos. Okay, Shabbat and holidays. That is page 142. Thank you. Okay, we have lots of, lots of prayer books. Um, also, just as, the, as we talked about a little bit about the Lev Shalem last week, about how, for people that haven't seen it, the fact that it has commentaries on the sides and it has um, a history and some history stuff and other things like that. Um, one of the things we haven't mentioned because we, and we've been talking about um, different the different prayers and uh, some translations, some ideas and philosophies that we're getting also besides the Hebrew is they say all translation is, I forget what the word is, it just left me. Uh, is a lie because it's not the same and it's really not this you can't get the exact tom from the he from the hebrew and the english right it's not interpretation. the same yes. Inter yes and but some books are more interpretation than others and some prayers they'll could do more interpretation they'll want it to be poetic they'll want it to be whatever so they'll it won't be a direct translation some books are more this is my bias i'm just laying it out there um when you do some of the the he the books are more more um interpretation than others uh it just i can't believe it just left me the he the orthodox book that you see all over the place oh they're books oh god it'll come to me in a second it's total interpretation um oh god i know what it is i can see it in front of me a lot Long. of people use them. Most of us here are probably not using it on a regular basis. It's going to, you see it in one second, just because I want you to know this. Okay. Barry? What's the I knew it. I knew it and it left. Art scroll. Uh, you've art all scroll. probably yeah. heard of Art Scroll. Um, if you haven't used it, you've heard of it. It is total interpretation. If you if you if you know Hebrew, you realize there's a lot of interpretation. It is not transliterate translation when they do the English. But just as a point of information, that's my bias. Um, okay, blessings to the Torah. Somebody want to start? Start. Okay, Lynette and then Arlene. Okay. Baruch et Adonai Hamvorah. No. You did great, except for look at the first word again. Oh. Barhu. Barhu. Good. 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 Adonai Hamvorah. I knew you knew it because you could do the other. Sometimes we were so used to our prayer starting with Baruch that you didn't right. really look and read right. it. So, sure. Baruch et Adonai Hamvorah. And then... We all say Baruch Adonai Yes. And now what's the next line? Who who did I who was going to be next? I think Arlene. Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melatalam Asher Bahar Banu Mikol Hamim Vinatan Lanu et for a toe, Baruch, a ta, a no, a Torah. Okay, Arlene was fabulous. She read fabulous. Does anybody have a comment? She didn't. We didn't all repeat the for, the blessing. She made her. it harder her for herself. It's not us repeating. She's supposed to repeat the line that we gave. And uh, some of the cards say it. Our Sidor, I love, I'm looking at the Lev Shalem now. I'm not looking at the other ones. They actually say it in the English. They say the person who is honored repeats the above response and then continues. So, but some of the cards, when I said about the card at the Torah, do not say that. Um, I'm sure everybody has heard 
at least once a week, somebody that doesn't, even though everybody else does, that you're supposed to repeat that line. So you made it hard for yourself, Arlene, but it was read beautifully. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, I, I, no, one, I, one question to ask about it sure. is, I read that now, and yet when I will go for an aliyah, I get so nervous that to read the, you know, the Hebrew from the class, and like that transliteration is there. How do you get over not looking at the transliteration? How you know you what? You just that? have to diff, have to bite the bullet. You have to that. You just have to do it. And if you get, and if you make yourself do it. You can read it. You read it beautifully. There wasn't a lot of hesitation. It was read exactly right. You just, the more you do it, you know what? I have to be honest. When I get up there, I get nervous. There's no question. I only read the Hebrew, but when I get up there, I am nervous. Can I read that? Of course I can read it. You know, how many thousands of times I've heard it. I've done it a number of times, but you still get nervous, but you just have to Grab yourself and know that you can do it and you can. And everybody, you know, everybody wants you to succeed. That's one of the things we do in the class and you do even in your in your schools. I'm sure that every, you know, we we see people that sometimes stumble when they get up there. Um, and sometimes I think, you know, you know, when it's, it's often a bar mitzvah, family member, whatever. And you think, you know, the kid practiced for a year. You could practice for a, a few hours to make sure you can do the Iliad properly. But um, we, everybody loves you. So you know what? If you make a mistake with one word, God certainly will forgive you and the congregation will too. So you just have to try. Marlene. I just wanted Marlene. to say this a little bit before, but you wanted it to get started into the prayer. I thought it was very interesting that you used the Yiddish word tam to describe how you can't, not an English word, to describe how you can't really always get it. And I thought that was very telling and very effective. <laughs> but it's true. There are some words that are very hard. There, you just, it does have a different feeling when you, in that, and in, in particularly Yiddish, I think with for us, a lot of them, because we know it, you know, the, a lot of those words separately. If you say shmata or if you say rag, it's not the same thing. You know, so it's it's bad in Hebrew. It's the same when we when we say. I guess when I think of baruch or blessing, it's it's something even more than blessing. So we have the feelings with the words, and I hope that we've been developing that a little bit. Okay, so that's and we talked about last week that we hold the eight seichayim, which are the wood things that go through the Torah, uh, and, and hold the Torah. We hold it when we're doing the bracha. Um, and, um, yes, and now we will go, then somebody reads it. We talked last week just for re reminder that at one point you actually did read the Aliyah, but we don't do that anymore. Um, we just do the Bracha and that is the honor. The honor is doing the Bracha, not the Torah reading. Um, one yes. more thing with the, um, Arlene, with, yes, Arlene like and then Cindy. When you go for the Ilya, one more thing I want to have straight in my mind is that there's the white, the marker that indicates the page, the what I don't know what it's called, that big, it's, uh, you put it to where they end, uh, where you're going to be, where they're going to begin. The Yad, then, oh, the yeah. Yad, the yeah. Yad, you cook the Yad, and you know, what we talked about words, you know what, does anybody know what Yad means? Hand. Yes, Suzanne, okay, anybody, everybody, hand, right. Yadayim, this is your two hands, okay? So, and it looks, when you look at it, you can see it looks like a hand with the fingers stretched out. Yes, now so your question. You put, it, you put it to where they're going to begin and then you kiss it. I'm comp I don't want to do that wrong. Um, but yes, when done, when they, the point, they point to where the, either they start, they're going to be starting or where they finish, that the end is where they finish. Okay, because we're going to do the bracha, the bracha afterwards. So in the beginning, they point where they are going to start. And you take, if you're wearing a talit, you take the tzitzit. If you're not wearing a talit, usually they have a, the binder for the Torah up there. So if you're not wearing a talit, you use the binder. If you're wearing a talit, use your own tzitzit. You touch the Torah. You touch on the white part near the words. Don't touch on the words because we don't want to smear the words. We don't want the words to get 
you know, w once they're wiped off, any letters, you can't use the Torah anymore. Or well, you have to fix it. It's not that you can't use it ever. You have to fix it. So if you do the white space closest to where the yacht is, where the finger of the yacht is. It's I interesting. We saw... Um, Anybody else? Somebody else have any questions about doing an aliyah? Yes, Cindy. I've often wondered why uh, bar bat mitzvah, I mean, a, a child can read Torah before their bar bat mitzvah, but they can't have an aliyah. So you just explained it because it's more of an honor to do the aliyah and to read Torah. Reading exactly. Torah is reading so Torah is just the work of this. That It's the harder work, obviously, we all agree. But yeah. And you can do it before Barbara. That is correct. See? Yep. Any other questions about an Aliyah to the Torah? Because I know it's a scary thing. I, that's why I started out with saying, even though the words aren't that hard, you're doing it by yourself. You're up in front of the congregation. It's scary. Celia and then Marlene. Uh, this isn't a question, it's just a statement. I get terrified up there. I can read it to someone perfectly and then it goes out of my head. And there's always the Gabayim and the rabbi and they will whisper it to you. So, you know, no matter what, you have help when you go up there. Exactly, exactly. And I think that, Marlene, one second. Um, I, I agree. Um, you. It's funny though, because you'll see some people that, re especially for reading Torah, when the Gabbai corrects, we understand, but when the Gabbai wants to help, some people like it and some people don't because they get thrown off when somebody else enters. But we are I'm willing to take whatever help they offer me. So yes, and it is scary. There, we, we all agree, You're, you are not alone, Arlene. Everyone is scared when they get up there and you feel like, oh my God, but you, you can do it, yes. Okay, uh, I think who else? Somebody has oh Patty, and then yeah. more Patty. Yeah. Uh, on Sh uh, Shemini at Sarah, we had um, the rabbi had a, a group of kids get together for an aliyah, and they held a talit over them. And what is that? I mean, what's what? Do, what is that always. all about? That's a, that's a special aliyah that so all the chill, all the people not arim they say kol arim the children, all the people b'nai, below B'nai Mitzvah age. And because everybody gets it, first of all, everybody gets a aliyot on that holiday. On Simchas Torah, everybody, everybody and anybody can get an aliyah. We have as many as you want. And one of them is for the children. That's That will happen everywhere, every year. Anybody else? Yes, Marlene? Um, is it? The decision or the laws of the rules of the conservative movement, or is it up to each congregation to determine whether in an interfaith couple somebody who is who is not Jewish is is, is offered uh, the honor of an aliyah? Good question. Okay. As far as I know, and this is just me, you you only get called up if you're Jewish because you give your Hebrew name to not to be tacky, but. You and it is part of the, but there probably may be some shuls there where the other person will come up with them. Mm -hmm. The aliyah is for the Jewish person, or what happens sometimes if it's particularly it happens when there's a simcha. It doesn't happen, I don't think. You know, stam on a Saturday morning they call up an interfaith couple. Um, first of all, usually you only call up one person anyway. We'll get into that in a half a second, um, but. Um, so they, the second one also might not be there for the Aliyah, but will step up when the rabbi talks to them, if it's the parents of the garments for whatever it is, they'll come up at that point. Some places will not let anybody come to the Torah if they're not Jewish. Um, you know, it's our Torah. It's our, you're saying, you know, it's hard for me to justify, honestly, to have somebody not Jewish have an aliyah to the Torah. Um, that's me personally. It's not and against anybody that's intermarried or against somebody who's intermarried, but whatever. Um, we've had, we often would have the non-Jewish uh, spouse um, do the Dvar Torah even. There's nothing against that. But it depends. It really, that is really a 
a decision of the Mara Da'atra of the shul. The rabbi is the Mara Da'atra, which means the decisor. If you, and you even when you see things, they'll say, you know, ask your rabbi, because there are many things that are different depending on who you are. The other thing is when, just to go off the subject a little bit more, um, when, you have, when you have more than one person coming up to the Torah for an aliyah, it used to be there was only one person. I, I remember as a child, I never saw more than one person. Um, I, and then I went to Adith Jeshurun where they would call up eight people for an aliyah. Um, you really are only supposed to have one person doing the bracha at a time because that way you know who you're saying amen to. So what you can do is, uh, personally, but you can do what your shul does, please, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do what your shul does, but if you're looking for what to do, is have one person do the bracha before and one person do the bracha after. And, and that way both great. people are heard, but you know who you're saying amen to. So that's just another aside about, so we know, we. I think as much as you know, makes you feel a little bit more comfortable. You're still going to be nervous when you get up there, but it makes you feel a little more comfortable with the whole process of, of um, having the lead to the Torah. Okay. Yes. Yes. M matzo ball and then Barbara. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So um, on our, in our textbooks on page 38, it says that, the first aliyah is reserved for the Kohen, second one for the uh, Levite. Then it says the third, oh, I lost my place. Um, the third through the seventh are not to be said by those. Is that what, am I understanding that right? What if that's that all you have in the synagogue at the moment? What if what? What if all you have left are Levites? Okay. Uh, first of all, that is very tricky. And it, honestly, uh, if I were the rabbi in that situation, I wouldn't call, call it Kohen Levy. I would do one, two, three, four, five, which is another option. You don't have to do Kohen Levy. You can call up them, uh, all of them by the number. It is what, more, more than that happening, because often there, I have never been to a shul that there are only Levi'im or Kohanim. But more, but what does happen is if you have a, a B'nai Bar or a Bat Mitzvah family that are a Kohen or a Levi, and you want to give them more Aliyahs than two, three, the last one, which the, 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 the kid will have, and the first two, the Kohen and Levi, um, if you want to give them more Aliyot, that it becomes a problem. And what they can, what you can do is you divide the Torah reading into more aliyot, and you can have extra ones that are other people. Um, it usually is not a problem, honestly. Most synagogue, our synagogue here, we have 500 families. We have a lot of people that come to shul. We do not have a lot of Levi'im. If I can tell you, I've had more aliyot in the last two months than I had in 30 years in my other synagogue because I'm a bat Levi. Um, in our synagogue, we did one, two, three. So, yeah, that is the rule. Yes, yeah, Cindy. Um, I'm a Bat Levy, and I thought, or at least at our synagogue, they asked, will you accept one, you know, a lower number? And I always say yes. It, maybe is it di different for the Well, some people, I don't know if they're asking if you're going to accept as a Bat Levy or if they're, if they're asking. There are some women that still won't do an aliyah to the Torah. I don't know if that's, if that's the question, question or not. Yeah. No, no, no. No, it's will you take. You no, know, it's just that if they're asking if you will accept the Bat Levi Aliyah or if you'll accept an Aliyah that's not the Levi Aliyah. Not a Levi Aliyah. Okay. So that's interesting because I wouldn't think they would ask you that. What, what some shuls, you know, that are in transition, as it were, will have women do Aliyah, but not. The bot Levi or but not the Levi or the Kohen Aliyah. Yeah. No, we have, um, so that yeah. yeah, so that so I could understand people asking, will you take an Aliyah that's not Kohen or Levi? I know that we had we have one guy who's a but Kohen, but Ben Kohen, and um, he will even when they do one, two, three, four, he'll still only take the first Aliyah. So mm -hmm. you know, it, it, different people have different things that they're comfortable with. Okay. And like our synagogue, when we first started 
giving women alio to the Torah, they were not called for the Kohen or Levi Aliyah. Hmm. So it's all, you know, we're in a period of transition. So difference and di- you will we'll definitely hear different things from different synagogues. And that's, that's okay. We're a big tent. Anyway, okay, now, so now the, the um, person read the Torah. Whoever was reading, they read the Torah. Now you come back, you're step behind, step in front of the Torah again. The Yad will be in the spot um, where you were, where the Torah reader finished. You again take your talit or the binder and touch the Torah, and then you, I did I know if I said you kiss it, you do, after you touch it, you do kiss it. Um, this is another thing that, I, I don't know what your synagogues are doing because of COVID. I mean, in the beginning, we had nobody come up to the Torah except for the Torah reader, and you were, whoever had the Aliyah was at their seat. Then we moved up closer, and now we are actually doing it at the Torah, but the, what we're talking about now when we talk about the choreography is in normal times. And it might not be normal time in your school, so you do obviously whatever your school does. Anyway, um, okay. Somebody read the Torah; they're finished now. Whoever has the Elia um, recites. Do, do I have a volunteer? I'll do it. Okay, Nina. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Ha'olam Asher Natan Lanu Torah Emet Ve'Aye Olam. Perfect, except I didn't, and this might be me because my my thing is a little soft. Vechaye Olam, read there. Good, perfect. I heard it. I didn't hear Nata. Exactly. That's exactly right. And don't anybody be intimidated because Nina is too good. (laughs) (laughs) That's about the only thing I can do too good. Well, it's all right, but I just don't want anybody else to feel like you have to read as as fluently as she did. And it was it was beautiful. It was perfect, but um, we don't have to read that perfectly. So please don't don't feel that way. Okay. So I think we've done the Leah to the Torah as much as we need. Is are there any other questions about anything connected with the Aliyah? Yeah, I got okay. a question for you. Let's with sure. The, see, at Ohev Shalom in Richboro, I have not. Ne- I mean, I'm there like 36 years. That's my whole thing. So we are, yes, my husband is with me. We are called to the Torah together. Then I go down to Atlanta, Georgia at a time synagogue in Marietta, Georgia. And Dan Dorsch doesn't do that. So it's like, you know. We go back to the fact that we're a big tent and the synagogues have different rules and different customs. Um, one of the things that my rabbi, not my husband, and my, my rabbi growing up taught me was you can interpret halakha, you can't change tradition. Right. Tradition is right. tradition. It is what it is. So mm-hmm. some people, well, you know, some shuls, that's the tradition. Some people, it's interpretation. I, I'm telling you, some synagogues will only let one person come up to Fernalia. Some people, some like, I, I, Jay in Philadelphia let eight people come up. Okay. So it's just, it's different synagogues have different rules and different customs. So we have to be accepting it's the rabbi supposedly that makes those decisions. And it, that, I won't say any of them are right or wrong. It's just different. A lot of it stems from the egalitarian stuff back in the 80s, you know. Well, the, the deal is, if you it, before women had alio to the Torah, it was easy. The women didn't come up. Only the husband came up. So, you, oh, one more thing, and I'm going to call on Marlene. One more thing associated with an aliyah to the Torah. Um, it was a Sephardic custom, but different people have chosen to um, take it upon themselves to stand up when your teacher or your spouse or your parent has an aliyah to the Torah. And you can either stand only when they do with the brachot or you can stand during the entire aliyah. So just so in case you ever see it, that's one of the things that you can, can happen um, in a synagogue. Yes, Marlene. 
A teacher, spouse, and a what? I was writing that down. A teacher, spouse, or who? Parent. Or, um, parent. Parent. Who did I say? Parent. Um, I do it. I don't. I actually do it for my children too. It's somebody you want to honor, actually. Okay. And any you can first of all, you can stand up any time. Nobody's going to stop you. But um, I, I think it's nice when you're to give honor by standing. I, I like it. And we I did not do it as a child. I never saw it as a child, but I've seen it as an adult, and we have actually adopted it. So just quick, a parent, quick, a parent, a parent, parent. That was the third one you said. For those people, those women who have the Lev Shalem book on the commentary on the left hand bottom side of page 172 there's a very interesting commentary on studying torah that i thought we would all appreciate when, when you read it and nice you want to read it i'll read it real quickly once a young man who had wanted to become a hasid arrived at the court of isaac Meir, the rabbi of gut the rabbi asked him if he had learned torah the young man didn't know what to answer he had studied torah but he didn't want to appear too bold and answer yes as if he had knew all the torah <laughs> Nor did he want to say no, for he would be he would be then lying. So he responded, "I know a little." The rabbi replied, "Can anyone know more than a little?" I just love that. Yeah. Good. <laughs> so that's us. We know a little, <laughs> but we're still learning. That's what I love about this book: all the commentaries on the side. I have a, right. A that's question. what we we mentioned it. Uh, I that, and I agree. I think it's I think it's a great yeah. resource. We I actually, agree. Question. We actually sure. say amen to the people who are saying the prayer. So this is this is a question about um Shabbat. I after um whoever says the prayer, you know, over anything at our Shabbat at home. Um, we all say amen. And at one point, my kids said, oh, we learned in Hebrew school that we don't all need to say amen. Only the people who didn't actually say the prayer. And so is that true? I mean, it's all instances. Interesting. Okay. Now you're mm -hmm. saying if you say it together or if, like say somebody yeah. does mozi. Is everybody okay. going to say it together or there's one person going to say it? Well, usually we assign one person, but everyone right. ends up doing it. <laughs> Just, right. Everyone well, does it. You don't everyone. have to say amen if you do it. The idea okay. of saying amen is you're saying so be it. And also by saying amen, it's as if you had said the bracha. Oh. Okay. If somebody nice. says, if, if, if I have my son say the mozi, and we all, all we we all do actually we all do the bracha for wash hand washing, right? I don't yeah. know all the regulations yeah. about this, yeah. but yeah. we yeah. do all do the bracha. But when it comes to the mozi, only one person says it. When we say amen, it's as if we had said that bracha. Okay, so, you don't so have when to we say it, when we assign someone, only one person is really supposed to do it. <laughs> Okay. It doesn't matter. You can do, you know, that's one of those things that really, first of all, anything you do in your house who's not, nobody's going to tell. But, <laughs> uh, but, and it's what your family custom is. But just oh. as you know, if some, if some, if one person says it and everyone says amen, it's as if you had said it. Okay. But that's a But for instance, I think different things are different because if you, we go back and this is really off the field, if you do halal, the, the person that's leading Hallel does the bracha for Hallel. You say, the congregation says amen, but then we re do repeat the bracha. So it just, you know, part of it is just getting to know the system. Yes. Okay, I just want to say, I was always told that if you have less than 10 people, you do not say amen after a blessing. Have well, you? I, I never, that I never heard. I, I will, I, I, I don't know why, thing. because you don't need, you don't need a minion for the, those brachot. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm not thinking about even. Why would you, I don't, I don't get it. I don't know. I have never heard that before. 
So I wonder if that's just a synagogue thing or what, but that's what I've I'll been look into. I will look into that. I will look into that one. I don't know. I, you know, obviously there are prayers that we can't say unless we have 10 people, but I never heard of not saying amen if you, if you have less than a minion. I don't know. I will look into it for you and see if I can find out the answer because I don't know the answer to that. Thank not you. Not something that ever came to mind. <clears throat> okay. All right. So, oh, do we do we didn't do we do the prop five? Oh, yeah, we did. Okay. So we're finished with Aaliyah, unless anybody has any other questions. Okay. <laughs> we know we're nervous. We know it, but we're gonna do it. Okay. Now, so we're gonna turn on a page, get away from the Torah blessings. We did that already. Come on. Uh, next, okay, the chosen people. I think we can read that. Uh, the Shema this week after we finish the Torah. Is that what you said last week? 46. Yeah, we're going to go there right now. Uh, it's a unit six. It starts on page 45 in the, in the uh, textbook on 46. It it, we do the Shema on Simsha in the Sim Shalom, the big Sim Shalom, it's 100. And the Slim Shalom Shabbat and Festivals, it's 112. Lev Shalom, it's 155. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Oftentimes when people say, we're gonna, I'm going to say the Shema, they think only the first line. But the Shema, the total Shema it includes other paragraphs besides the one line. I will ha ask for a volunteer to read the first line. Okay. Yes. Okay, who? Matzo ball. Oh, okay. <laughs> Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad. Good. Um, the only thing I would say, and only because, and, it, and you don't see the vowels, so it's not really that important, but if you would see them, it, the way we pronounce it, if we're doing Sephardic Hebrew, is Adonai, not Adonoi. Adonoi is when we do that O sound, that, like bar, Baruch instead of Baruch. So it's Adonai. Just And oh, you can read Adonoi, but just so you know why the sound is a little different. But that's perfect. That's exactly it. Um, we know question. all those words, I think. Um, yes. I have a question. Yes, Joyce. Joyce. So in my synagogue, when they do the last word, Shema, like they say it really loudly with a lot of force. And I don't okay. understand what that's all about. Great. The, the what they say loudly or with force is the last letter. Achad. It's not they usually don't say Achad, the Achad, because if it, we we've talked about this before, the diff the close similarity between the Rash and the Dalit. If it was Achair, it's other. Achad is one. They want to make sure that you really say and you hear Achad. And also, just as another thing, and it's in here, but I, in case people didn't read it or whatever. The, if you take the last letter of of the Shema, which the first word, which is an ayin, and the last letter of the Chad, which is a Dalid, they spell aid, which is witness. And we are a witness to God and a witness to the uh, to all of this. And actually in the Torah, I believe, it actually is larger, the ayin and the Dalid. So that's another little thing about the Shema. And yes, yes, Cindy. So at our synagogue, we usually cover our eyes mm -hmm. the first time that this line is written, but why don't you do it every time? Why do you cover your eyes? Okay. Um, got a phone call. Um, yes. Many synagogues they do, and we also teach the kids, many times we teach the children in junior congregation also to cover their eyes. This is like the prayer of par excellence. This is accepting God and saying who, that God is, is one. This is like the thing. So to concentrate 
and to only be focused on that, that's the reason to cover your eyes. So why do we only that's cover our eyes once? Like the basis. Oh, what did you rise? Did you say? No. When that line is repeated again, we don't cover our eyes. Or if we say, why is it? When is it repeated again? Yeah. Sometimes near the Torah service, you say. Okay, okay, okay. 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 yes, yes, it's in the Torah service, so bring out the Torah. First of all, can anybody think just this is this is not, this is just me on my sense. Would we, what, think what's happening when, during the Torah service, oh, when we say You Shema. don't close your eyes and turn your back on the Torah when it's right, exactly, exactly. We don't want to concentrate so much on our own selves when the Torah is up there, I can't imagine covering eyes. Oh. But if the Shema is said in a different place, like the total the Shema, Shema, whenever it's said, there are many, usually people do cover their eyes. If it's said with the paragraphs, that's when people cover their eyes. Uh, yeah, anything else? It's not, it's not mandatory, and some people won't do it. It's not, you know, it's not even like the bowing. The bowing is really part of the choreography. This is really more of an individual thing. So some synagogues will do it, some people will do it. It's not universal. Anything else about the first line? Okay, now we're gonna go to the second line and we're gonna read it, even though we don't usually read it out loud. Hmm. It's very little in this book. Okay, does so somebody um, want to read it? I'm not on the page, actually. Okay. Does somebody want to read the next little line? Lynette. And then Jay next time. Baruch, Shem, Bode, Malhuto, Leolam, Ba'ed. Perfect. Fabulous. Um, it says we read it quietly. Yes, we do read it quietly. Um, not sure. I think it actually does talk a little bit about it in the in the in our textbook. Um, Six. It, oh, to me, me. I don't know. Um, we do read it out loud once a year. Do oh. on Yom Kippur. This line is read out loud. Um, normally, it's read it's read silently. Or they in the book it says softly. Um, Sometimes I think people don't read it at all because when they're leading service, they go immediately to the next line. So I can't believe they read it at all. But you're really supposed to read it silently or softly. Um, and then we get to the first paragraph. Does somebody want to read? Jane, you went, you read, volunteered before. I don't know whether you want to volunteer for this. You don't have to. I just want to know, you to know that I did notice that you raised your hand. Um, anybody else? Cindy. <laughs> And then Joyce, then we'll get that next person, Cindy. The Ahavta et Adonai Elohinu. Oh, no. Elo. Yeah. Yeah. Good. The whole. Um, you know what? It's a, it's a different line in the in the book. In, in our doesn't matter, just keep reading. It doesn't matter okay. if it's another line or not. You can read a little bit more. Oh, that's fine. The whole the Vavha U whole Naf 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 Shaha. Good. Decha. Perfect. Great. Keep going. Okay. This, this, this actually, remember we talked about Ahava's love, love yeah. of our Lord, your God. It's, it's, it's actually, it says your, you shall love your God with all your heart. Live, Lev Shalem, this book. Uh, the whole, with all your heart, with all your nefesh, with all your soul, and with all your might. So we know those words. Okay. Do I have another volunteer? While while people are volunteering, and I think I saw Celia, maybe yes, Celia volunteering. Um, and when this is, sometimes this is read silently in shul. Sometimes it's read out loud. Oftentimes, when it's read out loud, 
It's read to the trope that's in the Torah. And if you look at the um, the words, you'll actually see the Torah tropes are in here. The little things besides vowels. That we, we talked about other things. And here there are other things besides vowels. And that's the Torah trope. And the Sim Shalom, everything that comes from the Torah has the Torah tropes in it and the Hebrew. Um, I'm not sure about Lev Shalem. I haven't used it enough lately. Okay. Um, my mom, mom, somebody else volunteered. I know. Okay, I volunteered. Tell you a question or a volunteer, either way. I volunteered. I volunteered. Agreed. Okay. Good. Varim Hadvarim Hadvarim Ha Ala Ela. Say the two dots. Ha Ela. Good. Ela. Where are you? It's the second sentence. It's after the Poland. In the textbook. In the textbook. Uh, in the textbook, I'll tell you where she is. But how you? Let's see where is the. Online five one. Five. I got it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Share. Anna. Huh? I know what. That's right. I know what. I uh, know. I can't see what's under it. He. It's a dot. One dot. He. I know he me za vo ka. Okay, this is really tricky. The matzava ka. Um, it has that dot in the middle. <laughs> and I'm not sure. This is obviously a grammar thing, but you ignore it because you have the two dots underneath. So it is pronounced like a V, not an U. Matzava ka. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and you see, like, there's more stuff after the last letter. That's the trope note. Yeah. Two, three more words, and then we'll be finished with this sentence. Hey, yes, exactly. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. Exactly. Va Becca. Va yes. Hayom Aleva Vecha, exactly right. Great. Hayom, just as an aside, is the day or today. Yes, Marlene and then Cindy. Would you be willing to read it with the trope for us, or is that going to be too confusing? Is that how people, I mean, it's done silent. It's done recited, it's recited in silent. Right? On our shul that we used to go to, it was always done out loud. And wow. this shul, for some reason, it's almost never done out loud. And okay. I actually like it down out loud because first of all, it's fun to sing the Torah tropes and I am not, don't know the Torah tropes. I did learn them at one, when I was bat mitzvah a million years ago, I learned from a record. They didn't teach us trope notes. They taught us from a record and right. I just had to memorize it. Um, later on, I think they had tapes, but we still didn't learn the Torah tropes. Now, most synagogues will teach the trope which is obviously much more valuable and I'll call on you, Cindy, in one second, because you can, do, first of all, it's not a one-time thing. You can do it another time with other places. So clearly it's mm -hmm. much better to do the tropes. I am not good at the tropes. I can sort of do it. It's sort of in one second, I'll get to it. But first, uh, who did I announce there for Cindy? Just one minute before we get to that, Cindy, do you have a question? Yeah, I do. So it's, it's uh, Becha. You, so you say there's two dots, even though it, yeah, Yeah. A little bit of it. So how do you know when you say there's two dots and when you don't? Just know. 
Um, you could never say it without it. You could never say it not being a V. It just couldn't be a word. No. You couldn't. You couldn't say mitzavcha. You couldn't say that. No. I'm thinking mitzavcha rather than mitzavcha. Oh, we talked. That's what we talked about before. Um, we talked about the long vowels and the short vowels that they follow. Um, that's a if short it time. follows, it's mitzavcha. I think it actually belongs with a, a no no sound. If mm -hmm. I look, one of the tricks is. If you know, and I used to do this for a shin and sin before I was so stupid and didn't realize that the sin is on the left. I would look for shalom and I knew shalom was a sh. So I, if it was the same as that, I would know. If you look above, I know it's uvechol. So I know, or no, no, uvechol, not shacha. So I know that after the, uh, the line, it ends the syllable. So if I know there, then it has. After the line, after that line, vowel underneath, what's mitzav b'cha, b'cha, it has to end the same as the one before. That's, you know, it's the long and the short, and it's it's sort of, you know, and either way, you won't notice it. First of all, you do a silent, it doesn't matter. You do it out loud, and well, you won't hear it, to be honest. Thank it's you. not that different. That's the trickiest thing, I think, in the... And with those two dots. Any other questions? Okay. So you could sort of hear uh, how it sounds a little bit like Toetrope. I'm not so good at Toetrope, but um, uh, okay. Now we're going to continue. Mara, Judy. It was beautiful, Mara. It was yeah. a beautiful rendition. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I just I like it. Uh, oh, the another thing that they bring up in the in the textbook actually is standing or sitting for this prayer. I seem to remember as a child, we stood for it. Uh, there's no place I know that stands for it now. So mm -hmm. I think that because they wanted to think that like this was the prayer and they didn't want to make it seem like it really was the pra this prayer. So they sat down. Yes, Andrea. We stand for it. You do. We okay, look, it. see? Yeah. We do. I like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, that's why I said there are many things that, you know, a lot of the stuff is not Nisenai. That's another thing you can learn is when people say when it's like forever and ever, they say it's from Sinai. That that means that's that's always the way it's been. Most a lot mm -hmm. of this stuff is not Nisenai, and it also does not have to be the same. It's not it, it's not important. It's what's really the tradition of your of your synagogue. It can be either way. There's no there's no um, law that it has to be. Anything else? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and we do what our synagogue does. That's what the comfort level is. Okay. Um, on line seven, if you have the, I now I'm good. On line seven in the textbook, um, in the Lev Shalem, it's like the third line down of the first of the paragraph. It starts a new verse. Vishinantam. Yes, please. Okay. Vishinantam Livaneka Vidi Barta Bam. Vishif Vishif Tikha. Oh. Continue. Yes. Okay. You can keep going. You're doing great. Yeah, until the end of the of the Bive Tekha Uvlechtaha Vader Uf Shafbaha Uf Kumecha. Boy, aren't you a show off? That was I know. beautiful. <laughs> I gotta come myself. I'm okay. Well, you are. First of all, it was terrific. Thank you. It was great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, let's see. No, okay. So now, now everybody is gonna be intimidated because you were too good. Um, anybody else want to continue, Jane? Line 12 in the uh, textbook or the next to the last line in Lev Shalim. Vishinantam le ota et 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 ha. I'm lost. Wait a second. I don't know where you are. Line, line 12. 
Is that right? No. That look Ukshartem. Oh. Right? Line 12. Oh, and you see it? Right. Ukshartem. Tim. Good. La Tem. Le La Oat. Good. La Oat. What? Wait. Le read it slowly. She's, I'm telling you, she was too fast and intimidated. La Oat. And the next what word is? L. Al. Well, mine. Remember straight. Yes. Al. Yerach. Yerecha. No. Yerecha. Remember, we talked about the difference between the Dalit and the Raish. This is one of those examples. Yadecha. Yadecha. Good. Uh, aha. Remember what Yud sound. You. It's the Yud sound. Good. Good. No, it's not. A, no. These are these are the letters that are similar looking. You really you you pointed this out. I like it. It's not. It's a T sound, not an S sound. Le to to fa. Vote. Yes, let's uh, up vote. Vote. And don't and we'll get to what let's vote to are. Yes. Uh, by Bain. Bain. Uh, sorry. Remember the Yud makes it as long A. Um, a. Yes. A, a, a nar. Necha, a necha. Uh, that's right. A necha. That's exactly right. Okay. A naim or eyes. Okay. The totafot um, are <laughs> symbols or signs. Okay. Yadecha is from yad, from hand. Yadecha. Yes. And when we talk about the mezuzah, do we, right? We did the mezuzot, a mezuzot. Did we get that far? No, we didn't get to the last line. Okay. I'm going to read just the last line. Uchtav tam. Okay, you're going to, supposed to write them, inscribe, cote on the doorposts. Mezuzot are not the the um the thing you put on the door. The uh, that's called the bite, actually. It's the housing. For the, it used to be that mezuzot were doorposts because that's where you put this these words was on the doorpost. Now we refer to the mezuzah as the cloth, the paper that goes in the house, the bayit that we put on our doors. So originally it was doorposts. It says inscribe them on the if you look at the English on the doorpost of your house. So it was doorpost. We don't think of it as doorpost now. We put the mezuzah on the doorpost. Um, but the mezuzah is really the paper inside. If you ever buy a, a mezuzah that's too cheap and they have a paper in it, is it's that probably kosher? not kosher. <laughs> Just as an aside. If it's anything less than $35, it's not, it's not a kosher a mezuzah because the paper inside is not real. It has to be handwritten just as a Torah is written. It was really written exactly by the same people that write the Torah and written like the Torah. If you've ever gotten a new mezuzah and put it up and looked at the at the cloth, at the paper, you'll so, know that. Yes. Tell if you're looking at both side by side. What? How, how could you tell that one is the kosher one and one isn't? Okay. You can tell by number one, you can tell, I'll give you the first way you can tell by who you purchased it from. The okay. second way is that it's a, it's not a paper. It's supposed to be on the same stuff that the Torah is on. It's on um, parchment. It's on parchment. It's not paper, thin paper. Okay. Number three, it's handwritten. It's not printed. Number four, oftentimes you'll actually see the lines that they inscribe they not not color, but they you know made a line so they could write the letters on top. Not always, but it's going to be handwritten. It's going to be ink. It's not going to be printed, and that's really how you can tell. Thank you. Okay, it is eleven o'clock. I realize. I apologize. We didn't do much, but I think hopefully everybody feels a little bit better at least about having the lead to the Torah, and you're getting all going to be brave enough to do it. And um, we'll get to the Shema a little bit. We'll 
continue with the Shema next week. I'm just and if there are any and if you want to do any of the other prayers just to reinforce or whatever you feel that you want to do any of the other prayers just to read or go over, please feel free. We can do that next week also. So anything else? Any final? Yes, Cindy. I have a I have had Barbara after I just I said Cindy first. So Cindy okay. and then Barbara, I promise I'll remember. Cindy. I just have a cute story to end with um, for those dog lovers out there. So we always say the Shabbat prayers together. And whenever we say the Hamotzi, my dog comes into the room waiting for his piece of help. Every time. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. perfect. I'm going to call on Barbara, but I just want to, I want you all to be Hebrew scholars. And you're going to be Hebrew scholar in one sentence. You don't say the Hamotzi because ha is the. So it's either the Motzi or ha Motzi. Okay, now you're a biblical scholar, Cindy, a Hebrew scholar. Now, Barbara. Okay, this is just a commercial. Um, our sisterhood made mezuzahs uh, last week. And the gal who helped us has a website on Etsy, and it's called You Shall Love. Like the first couple of words of the Shema. Nice, I like it. And, they, and she does them uh, individual. Uh, she does them whatever you want, football teams or names, or if, uh, if you've got a grandchild interested in dinosaurs or trains or anything, she makes them up personally, nice. whatever you want. You shall Fine. Love. Nice. You shall love. And that's one of, and that is one of the joys of the fact that the mitzvah is the cloth, the paper, the bayi, the house can be anything. As right. she said, it can have dinosaurs on it. It can have a. It can made be made out of Jerusalem stone. It could be needle pointed. It could be anything. The body can be anything. So and it's fun and it's nice and especially for kids and even if people have a something that they're really into, you can get that. But anyway, thank you. Yes, uh, you shall love. We got, I wrote it down. Love. Thank you very much, everybody. Shabbat shalom. I'm sorry, Cindy. I'll think about your dog when I do mozi tonight. Shabbat shalom. Have a good night, everybody. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.